to say that white doesn't have to hurry to capture the knight on f4 because it's not going anywhere. And perhaps white could even set himself up for the subsequent attack by playing the preparatory move king g1 to h2, which if you think about it is actually a very logical move because once you play g takes f4, you want to be ready to occupy the g file with your rook and potentially launch a mating mm -hmm. attack. But that's, you know, pretty next level. You could also play this more simply. You could recapture the knight on f4 and the computer clearly, Peter, has not had its breakfast today because it is suggesting in some lines mm -hmm. to play the simple rook a1 takes a5. Hey, that's a pawn. But more importantly, rook takes a5 applies lateral pressure on the e5 pawn. The e5 pawn supports the knight on f4. And without the support, the pawn on h6 is going to fall with checkmate. How did Fabiano Caruana get such a crushing position against his compatriot Ray Robson? And did Fabiano Caruana find the crushing, the brutal Rook A5 idea to finish off the game? Let us have a look. It was a Joko Piano and a quiet one at that. C3, Joko Piano. D6, Castles and A5 was chosen by Ray Robson. Fabi just plays Rook E1 and Bishop A7, Knight D2. And Fabi goes for this nice knight maneuver where it will come B3 or G3. Very common in Joko Piano and Rui Lopez. Castles in knight G3. Knight E7. So this is the kind of plan that is very common amongst club players. We just, even I have tried this in so many games. I just play knight H4, knight F5 and then crash. Crash through the king side. Something lands on H6 and uh, or G7 and it's over. So at the top level too, this is very hard to uh, deal with as black. Knight g6 was played by Robson, bishop b3, bishop e6, and bishop c2. Of course, white doesn't want to exchange of that nice bishop. And now c5, d4. Takes, takes, and queen d6. Here, Fabi plays bishop e3, inviting Ray Robson to take the b2 pawn. And here the game changes. So after queen b2, Fabi plays a very subtle move. What would we normally do here? Rook b1 is tempting. Queen takes a2, two pawns, but you've got a rook on b7. That's tempting. That's probably what rare option expected. But Fabi had other plans. He plays bishop b3. A very strong move because after takes, takes, and queen c3, queen is trying to go back. The point is, Fabi now has a beautiful knight on f5, which cannot be challenged. And here, rare option played queen c7, just continuing his retreat with the queen. He's a pawn up. What he probably should do is rook d8 makes space for the king to run if needed. But that's so hard to do. He goes queen c7 and now Fabi crashes through with bishop takes h6. A peace sacrifice. Takes and he's not taking back with the knight. He plays queen d2. Continuing the pressure. The point being after knight f4 which stops the threat. g3 is just winning a piece. Because if you play knight takes h3, king h2 or king g2 and... Uh, Queen h6 is unstoppable. And once that happens, it's mate. So, black cannot touch this pawn. Ray plays knight h5, holding, uh, giving the piece. And now, Fabi takes, takes, and king h1, preparing rook g1. King h7, getting out of the line of the uh, g file. And here, Fabi found this super strong move. The most brutal move in the position to finish off the game. It's a move that not many people in the world would think of. Very few. A handful of people would convert this position in the style Fabi converted. Because normal moves like Rook G1 are possible. But Rook G1 and the Knight still cannot move because of Queen H6. So these are the ideas in the position. Even just activating the Rook first and then continue, continuing with the attack. Knight H4. All these ideas are in the air. But Fabi spent time and he had already prepared this Rook takes A5. A move out of nowhere. You wouldn't expect this rook move to win the game. But how does it win the game? It, the idea is super strong. The point is, now pawn takes, pawn takes, rook takes. I mean, rook takes is coming. And that undermines his knight. The whole position of black is uh, built on this knight on f4. If that is forced to move, queen h6 is going to be game over. So that's the idea of rook takes a5. Now, if you give white a chance, he'll play takes, takes a rook, rook e5. So, rare option plays bishop b6. So, what's the point? Now, you'll have to exchange rooks and then it's fine for white, right? But this is where Fabi plays 
the crucial pawn takes e5. What a move. You can't take the rook because then queen takes f4 and it is mate on h6 and after king holds g7. There's simply no defense. You can play f6, but queen takes h6, king g8, and rook jumps in. Rook g1, king goes to f7, queen g7, king e8. Where is the window? Knight d6 is enough, yeah? You win the queen. And checkmate is anyway going to happen. So here, after pawn takes e5, Ray took back. And after rook takes e5, Ray thought for a while, but he couldn't find any defense. There's just nothing to do. You can give up the queen. <laughs> But otherwise, if you move the knight, h6 falls and it's mate. And if you don't move the knight, how do you defend the knight? You can't. So just a beautiful finish by Fabiano Garivano showing how strong he is in positions that are tactical. Like these kind of positions are, he's so good at this. So he's in good form at the World Cup and he advances to round five where he waits for his colleagues to join.